Hi everybody, I'm James Golding and welcome to Gunroom TV Food. So today we're going to be working with venison and as you can see this is a huge piece of venison. So I think they call this a uh, flintstone steak and this is from Creech Hill Butchers. Um, thank you to Bill for, for giving us this fantastic piece of meat and um, usually with venison you know I'd probably cook this on a barbecue and do all, all sorts of things with it but today I'm actually going to do a venison tartare and it's one of my favorite dishes uh, to do at this time of year. So we're not quite into autumn yet, uh, there's still some warmer days so I thought it'd be quite nice to do a dish that you can use the venison for all year round because this is available all year round as we all know. So I'm just going to talk through some of the ingredients that you're going to need for this dish. So we've got some capers, flat leaf parsley, gherkins, I've got a small onion here but you can use shallot, uh, Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of hot sauce, you can use Tabasco but for this I quite like using Cholula. We've got some pepper, some mustard which I'm going to talk about in a minute, a little bit of added extra. Uh, we've got this fantastic uh, black truffle here from the Mion Valley Truffle Company and ketchup. Now Ketchup's a bit of a weird one. Some people like it in their tartare, some don't. Personally, I really like it. It takes me back to my days working at Le Caprice. We used to make my favorite uh, beef tartare and we'd always add in a little bit of ketchup and it just adds a nice bit of acidity to it. To that, I'm gonna be serving it with some sourdough uh, toast because that works really well. And we're gonna finish it off by plating it and, and grating some of this amazing truffle over the top. So let's get cracking. What we want to do with the meat is find a nice part of the steak which has the least amount of sinew. So when you're looking at the meat you can kind of see where that's going to be. Obviously you don't want to be cutting any pieces of meat off that have you know the sinew running through it. So what I'm going to do is separate off this large muscle here simply by cutting through the natural joins now, some people call this seam butchery, but basically all you're doing is looking for any large sort of areas of, of sinew. I might actually take off this piece here as well, so that we've got a good amount of meat. So I'm gonna trim that. I'm actually gonna keep this now. I mean, if you think about the size of that, that's actually a perfect size of uh, uh, venison steak for two there. So we're gonna keep that, and I might do another video on that at another time. So we're going to trim this. You don't want any of the fat. I never thought I'd say that but um, usually I like to keep fat on my food especially when I'm cooking it. As we all know venison is very lean meat. There's not a lot of fat on it so it's quite important when you're cooking venison to leave as much of that fat on as possible. You can see here look there's a little natural join. I'm just going to trim that off because that will contain a little bit of sinew. So let's have a look. I don't know if you can see that, but that's, that's really lovely. There's a little bit of fat just running along on the outside, but that's not a problem. Check over, there we go, see that? That's got some sinew, so just with a sharp, small knife, cut that off. And make sure you keep all your trimmings. You know, you can chop these up, fry them off, put them through sauces, all that sort of stuff. So never throw any of the meat away. It's very important to keep as much of it as possible. So if you have a mincer, which I don't, you can run this through a mincer on a coarse setting, but traditionally tartar was always chopped. So we've got this fantastic uh, sharp knife here from Marmaduke Knives. Great knife, all handmade. This is super sharp, so this is carbon steel. This works really well for chopping meat like this. Um, you can see the colour on this. I mean, for, for anybody who hasn't tried venison, you really need to get some of this in your life. It's, it's absolutely great all throughout the year. It's a fantastic wild alternative to beef. Um, as we all know, beef can be reared and sort of fattened in a lot of ways that aren't necessarily great for us. So eating wild meat like venison, which has obviously lived out in the wild, grazed off the land, is a really, really good way of, uh, of making sure that anything that's going in your body is uh, of a very high and, and natural sort of standard. So I've just shredded that down. As you can see now, I'm just sort of dicing it, almost mincing it myself, 
with the knife. And so while you're doing this, you can actually look through the meat to see if there's any little bits of sinew, but I think we're looking pretty good with this. It's a fantastic quality. And I believe this is um, from Hampshire. So just over the border from us here in uh, Christchurch. So we'll mince this down. If you're gonna be doing this ahead of time, it's quite important to um, have your bowl sat on ice because you're gonna to want to keep this nice and cold. So we're running our knife through this. So there we go. So it's, it's nicely, sort of roughly chopped. This is going into our bowl. So in it goes. So that's one side, we'll have a good clean down. Okay, so it's time to get our garnishes ready. Before we start chopping everything up, I'm just gonna get the sourdough ready to go. So we want the sourdough to be nice and warm when it's served, adds a lovely bit of heat to our tartare. So I'm just gonna put these in the toaster, give them a little flash. So we have our meat nicely chopped there. Into this, we're gonna add some gherkin. So probably, I think one gherkin should do it. So we're gonna chop this down now into a nice, even brimoise or dice. So cut it into strips like so. And then into a nice little dice, we'll add that in. And you can use any sort of gherkins. I quite like these um, sort of semi-sweet uh, dill pickles. I think they, they work really well with a tartar, you can use cornichons. You know, they're, they're also very good if you quite, if you like it quite sort of vinegary, um, add those in. So this is, yeah, probably about three quarters. So we're gonna add in that. And you kind of have to judge it, you know, by the amount of meats or the amount of people that you're cooking for. So good pinch of capers. And you can use lily put capers, you can use the tiny little ones. I wouldn't chop those if you were planning on using those. And also, you know, you've got those big caper berries which you can also use. I tend not to use those because they do have those little kind of pips in them which can be a bit weird when, uh, when you're eating it. Um, half a small onion or a shallot. So we're just gonna chop this nice and fine. Not too much, because onion can be a bit overpowering. So, probably about that much in there. We have our parsley, flat leaf parsley. You can use curly as well, obviously. Very important that you wash this. Always wash your parsley and dry it off really well before um, you know, adding it in, because there's nothing worse than eating a tartare and you've got all the grit from the, the parsley in there. So make sure you wash that really well. Let's just check our toast quickly. Oh, that's coming along nicely. We'll just stop that there for a second and we'll finish that off when we're ready to go. So now over to the condiments. Now this is, everybody has a slightly different idea on how they like their tartare. Personally, I do it in the way that I was taught back in the day at Caprice. So I add in ketchup and I think ketchup really does make a tartare. I'm sure a lot of people would say otherwise, but that's what we believe. Uh, some black pepper. So a good crack of that. You can use Tabasco. I quite like using uh, Cholula hot sauce. I think it gives it a little bit of a smokiness, which works really, really well with the uh, venison. A good amount of sea salt. I'm using Blackthorn today. And a uh, big shout out actually to Sam and Shauna from um, Hang Fire Barbecue. They gave my wife, Erica, this um, incredible truffle mustard for her birthday and it is stunning. It's a Dijon mustard that's basically mixed with uh, a bit of truffle and it works so well in this dish. So we're gonna put a good amount of that in there as well. Now you can use English. I mean, some people actually don't even like mustard in their um, tartare. Personally, I think it works really well. So we're gonna give that a good old mix around. That's looking really, really good. 
Okay, so we're pretty much ready to uh, plate up now. I'm actually gonna add in some of this Worcestershire sauce now at this point, because if you add it in a bit later, you find that it comes through a bit better. So we'll give that a good old stir in. We've got our toast here, our little sourdough croots. You can um, square these up. I quite like doing them in little sort of triangles, actually. I think they, they work quite well. So we'll have those. Put that to one side. Serve these on, a, on the plate. Little sourdough toast. And then for plating up, um, I quite like using a, a ring. If you've got any moulds, that's great. We've actually don't have any moulds, so I've I've taken um, my wife's cake uh, form here, which will work perfectly. I'm sure she'll love that, but using the venison tartare in there. So we're basically going to press this down into the mould, and you want to get it all the way to the edge. Try and make sure that it's nicely pressed in. And then you can take our egg, which classically you serve the egg yolk in the middle. And we're going to do that here today. Now you can use a quail egg if you want. This is a lovely Burford brown egg. And the best way to do it, I find, is to just tap it with your paring knife and then use the, the shells basically to get rid of that egg white. Now you can keep the egg white if you have a baker in the house. So we'll set the egg white to one side and the egg yolk, I mean some people like to put it in, in the shell, personally I like to put it straight into the, um, into the tartare. So what we're going to do is take the back of the spoon, make a nice little kind of indent there, just as like a little sort of area for the uh, egg yolk to sit in and let's press that in. So we'll gently lift that off and give a nice little drizzle of the cold pressed rapeseed oil just to finish it off. And then the last bit, we're gonna take some of our Mion Valley truffle and using a microplane, I'm just gonna put a little bit of that truffle over the top of the venison tartare. And with that truffle uh, mustard in there as well, that'll, that'll be absolutely delicious. So there we go, that's our Hampshire venison tartare with sourdough croutes and Mion Valley truffle.